And they call me Prospect. I'm from the Bronx, born and raised, South Bronx. The exit to Barrow, you know what it is. I've been rapping since I was like 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? And um, Big Pun is a dude that I grew up with. He was like my, my cousin, best friend and shit from back in the days. And out of nowhere, you know, I heard, I heard some shit he did on the radio. And I was bugging like, yeah, that's my man's gun right there. After I heard that, I had got the little tape he had, you know, the killer on it. You know what I'm saying? And then right here on this block he's sitting on right now, is where, you know, he usually come through at. So, when he came through the block, I was like, yo, the pun, I got the little tape you had. You know what I'm saying? I heard your joint right here. So, he was like, word. He got my whip. He was like, let me see that. So, I took the tape out. He was like, you the killer tape. So he was like so happy that I had it and she was like, yo, stay right here, we gonna come, I'm gonna come back through, we're gonna drink some 40s, and I want us to chill. So I was like, alright, cool. So then he came back through, me, him, Cuban, got some 40s and shit, you know, swimming drunk all night, chilling. And he, I never I never told him I rap or nothing, but he knew. So he was like, yo, he had some shit. So I just started rapping, whatever. And he was like, yo, I like you, I want you to be down with us. So I never really asked him to put me on or nothing. He basically like forced me, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, B, I like this shit. I want to take you to meet Joe today. I was like, you know what I mean? I was like skeptical about Joe because I heard Joe was like a funny dude. So I was like, I don't really want to meet him, you know what I mean? But he was like, nah, fuck that. I want you to be down with me. Fuck that. And then they took me through to meet Joe. I am off with Joe, you know what I'm saying? Joe was like, whatever, like, he good. We're working him, but he wasn't really convincing. He sounded convincing. You know what I mean? But anyway, point of, you know, kept me with him and we started doing drinks like that. You know what I'm saying? Me and Punch started doing records. And he heard me on punches. So he just wound up me on bowing down. Like, alright, fuck it. He you know, his shit. And then we just you know, kept going. And so I got down with the squad and all that. You know what I mean? So I got down with the terror squad. I was like 17, going on 18. When I was 17, I was like, right, I was getting hard into it. But over here, they had like a whole. Um, my man named TUD. He was like an older dude. He was like the head rapper out here. You know what I mean? So I used to do do little cycles with dudes and all that, but it was like they didn't really pay attention to nobody else. It was like, all right, you know what I'm saying, y'all, whatever. TUD was the dude, you know what I'm saying? So he was my motivation, you know what I mean? So it was kind of funny because everywhere else I was rapping besides my hood, he was saying I was nice. I never was getting that, that props over here like that, you know what I mean? So, you know, I was like, yo, I think dudes is hating, so I just went in the lab, so I going in there hard, like, fuck it, I never rhyme over here no more. Next time they can see it, they gonna hit me on the CD, you know what I mean? That's when I linked up with Punish shit. That's when I was probably taking it serious, when I want you to be down, this, that. That's when I really got in that zone and shit, you know what I'm saying? Cause it was funny, because when I heard he was down with the squad, I felt like they needed a nigga like me. I was like, I'm the perfect nigga for them, you know what I'm saying? So it was just weird because I thought about it before it happened and it really happened. That's crazy when you know a dude just being a regular dude from the block. Average dude around here hanging, snapping, mad jokes, you know what I'm saying, playing sports and shit. So it was like kind of weird because you always looked at him as like a regular dude. Like, So even when he was like getting big and all that shit, it still didn't feel like that to me because I was looking at him as a regular dude. But when you just start seeing, you hear shit on radios everywhere and you start seeing other rappers and shit praise him, Rappers that you looked up to, like rappers that I looked up to, they was praising my man like he was the greatest. So from there, I started understanding that, yo, my dude is really big right now, you know what I'm saying? So when we start doing the tours and the, from the clubs to big stadiums and shit, like 15, 20,000 people, that's why I'm like, yo, that's real, you know what I'm saying? Going to awards and all that shit, like limo service and mansions, and you know what I mean? Like, that's when I was like, yeah, my dude is big, you know what I'm saying? This shit is like, crazy right now, you know what I mean? Regular homies that everybody looking up to, like all over the world. On every state, hearing his song on the radio, like, damn, like, he was really big, you know what I'm saying? But when it's your man, you never look at him like that, you know what I'm But it took like a while for me to really understand, like, my homie is a superstar, you know what I mean? Because he a humble dude, so he never really, his, his approach was never on no superstar shit, so he's a humble dude, so. It took a while to kick in, but yeah, my dog, my dog was big, you know what I mean? From there, we showed like an eight-year run, you know? You know what I mean? A few Terror Squad albums, a couple of Big Pun albums, a couple of Fat Joe albums, you know, a couple of soundtracks and everything. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm here, you know, I'm trying to do my own thing right now. My independent shit. You see, the game is different. The game changed now, you know what I'm saying? At that time, it was more like, be nice, people give you opportunity. People will try to set you up and shape you into a rapper. But right now, the game at a point where the labels just spoil you. You gotta already be a made, already a made person. You know what I'm saying like you gotta either, you gotta either know somebody that's famous in the business, or you gotta already 
you know, have your knowledge of the game where you already got your whole look, your whole movement, the way you're trying to go, where they don't want to shake you in. They used to shake you in to train you and shit. Now it's no train. You got to come as a ready project with your image, know what you want to do, and have your, your style, everything down packed. You know what I mean? So, and now you got, and plus a lot of mix safe and shit, you know what I'm saying? That helps you out a lot too, putting out all the mix safes. But it's really going to where the place is at, where the events is at, you know what I mean? And, and your face out there. The more people see you in different states, the more they respect you. Because this game is like, people look down on you, you know what I'm saying? They might look at you like, oh, he's a little bummy dude. But when they see you in a few different states, like, well, this dude's everywhere, you know, he over here in this state. They start respecting you more, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's fake, you know what I'm saying? They respect money, man. So, you know what I mean? But in the day, you just gotta be around, man, and you just go hard, man. Whatever you wanna do, just go hard, man. What I learned from this game, man, is that this shit is strictly business, man. No matter how many hugs they give you, no matter how many times they tell you I love you, and I'ma take you my brother, don't believe that shit, man. This is all business, man. They love you when you hot, or when they feel you hot, or when they feel they can use you, you know what I'm saying? When they feel like you not hot no more, or when they feel like you can't, they can't get gain that off you, they can't use you for something, they go their way, you know what I'm saying? It's the whole game. People you do business with, and people that's in the business that show you love when you come through. Yo, what up, homie? Yo, 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 it's love, love. You see them niggas two, three years from now, and your situation changed, them same dudes that was running up to you, showing you hugs and love, and niggas don't even fucking say what's up to you. They walk with their head down, they go the other way. Dudes I used to want to give you beats for free, like fucking beasting on you and shit, same dudes right now, you got an arm and a leg to get one beef, and they probably try to charge you 15000 they trying to give you them shits for free at that time, you know what I mean? So, what I'll tell you is the main thing is, yo, it's always business, it's never personal, man. So when niggas make something like it's personal, yeah, you my brother, I love you, don't believe it for one bit. I don't care how much, how good it sounds, you know what I'm saying? Just keep your, the main thing about this business is you gotta be smart with the business, you know what I mean? As far as like the paperwork, the contracts, everything is business as far as videos and putting your shit on the radio or a feature or you know, what you're writing, you're publishing, like everything is business, so. Really get small behind the business, man, and you'll really last longer in this game, man. You know what I mean? But always remember, business is never personal, man. Okay. What's poppin', man? It's your boy Prospect, man. Prospect, though. Peach of the T. BX is the barrel, man. From BX to Boston, man. You know how I do. It's love on both sides, man. Dude, show me love. I'm holding it down with PSPTheBest.com. You know what I'm saying? Dudes, get it in, man. Watch out for that. You heard me? Real talk. Them can't stop, we are warrior, we no care about no